A busted bow? That could have come in handy. go straight as an arrow put a fork in it we're done That's certainly doing something. Last but not least. Close your mouth, sir. You look ridiculous. Huh. It's missing something. Like a tongue of some sort. Well, if this isn't a thorn in my side, I thought we were sitting on a gold mine. Hold on a minute. Yes, this looks like another fragment. Someone's left this for us. But, but what happened here? Are the Mayans 
gone. Swept from the playing field. I would bet my entire weight in gold that the same miscreant meddling on the moon also saw fit to destroy an entire civilization. The stakes keep raising, Asher. Hold a second. I've been here before. I'm sure of it. But I can't for the life of me put my finger on it. It's like coming home, but you don't know anyone, if that makes sense. Color me interested. You've taken the appearance oh, no. of a charming young lady. Put that You're job to good use, and let's question that child. I gave them the present. My work was for the future. But in one cowardly act, they've robbed the world of the name Tesla. Like how a child mindlessly tears a page from a precious book. Someone has meddled with the hydro system. Edison stocks, perhaps. The water damage has set us back months. With the coffers empty, we cannot continue. Oh, but the worst... Your young colleague and fiancé, Moshe, oh, fell victim to this sabotage. I cannot keep you on, Hannah, nor can I pay you. There is a chest inside containing some trinkets and other personal belongings. Please take whatever you like, and something for Moshe's family. A life's work along with a life, taken. Every stop on our travels thus far, the wreckage of dreams. My guess, that silver-haired scoundrel is responsible. I'll be damned if this place isn't familiar, though, along with that miserable maestro. Need something to open it. Well, like my father always says, the key to success is getting in. Well, this grinds my gears. They're broken and my clockwork just won't do it. 
we gotta find something that fits. Quite the collection here, though they look a little worse for wear. Something tells me this flooding was no accident. I think our time-based rogue is struck again. Have a look at all this. <laughs> Looks like Zeus and Poseidon had a mighty game of chess. Huh, at least there's a nice collection of expensive paperweights going on here. Huh. Looks like that's the key to our puzzle. Literally. But how are we gonna fish it out? That water does not look particularly inviting. Rain or shine, the umbrella delivers.
A hook? Well, that could be the key to, well, fetching that key. Yet still but a minor key. The Major will be getting the damn thing into the middle of that giant electrified bathtub. Fine and dandy. Except that you ain't got a hook. Open that key, we'll feel sorry for you and levitate our way. You got the right apparatus, son. All you need now is a steady hand. I just caught myself salivating over your inspired dish. You're optimistic. Let's hope we get lucky. Tenacious tadpoles. What kind of designs you got on that frog exactly? You know, I was out in the wilderness once with a fellow who ate a bad snake. It put him in such a spin he thought he was King Solomon, which wouldn't have been so bad had he not thought I was the Queen of Sheba. I don't know about you, but I'm hooked on this adventure. That fellow wasn't lying. It's broken like the Sphinx's nose.
Alakazam. Oh, poor bastard. Now, I'm not materialistic, but I expected more from a scientist. At least something shiny. Another antiquity fragment. Oh, good lord. I've heard of wild goose chases before, but I can't even see the goose here. Oh, well. Onward, Asher. We must hope the pieces fit into place soon. More perspective is needed. Another tape contraption. Out of place and out of time. So even featherheads like us can't miss it. Best hear what it has to say. Amelia, do you hear me? What? Yes, sorry. What were you thinking about? Was it Fred, your co-pilot? It doesn't matter. You guys don't believe me. That's, that's not true. I, I want to understand. Well, so do I. God, you're sitting there like you have all the answers. Well, why don't you tell me then, fancy pants? Tapping away on that strange clipboard of yours like you're on some kind of Morse code race? I am just documenting our session. Typing notes? That's it. Typing? Well, funny, I don't see a typewriter. Look, I know what is going on. I see how you're acting, how you all look at me. You think this is my first rodeo in one of these places? I was a nurse once. A volunteer, but a nurse nonetheless. And you're staring at me like I'm sick. Well, I am not sick. I'm... I'm lost. Uh-huh, that's right. You and Fred were flying when the accident occurred. If only that man... He... He came out of thin air. One minute I'm talking to Fred about the Red Sox, and the next minute this strange man just appeared in the back of our plane. I don't know how he got there. Doesn't make sense. If only he never showed up, we would still be flying. I would still be flying. I wanted to do so much more. Right. It's okay. Like, uh, being the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. Seems so long ago. Uh-huh. Tell me more about this strange man. Wh what can I say? He just appeared. I suppose, when I really think about it, I can tell you he looked scared, like he didn't expect to be there. I know that makes me sound crazy, but then again, everything that happened after he showed up in our plane was crazy. Like? Well, the engines were suddenly shot to shit for no reason. Probably because of that weird thing stuck in the plane. And no, I'm not going to draw it again, okay? And 
that man, he, one second he was there, and the next he was gone. Just like that. The parachutes, gone. The plane, well, oh, poor Fred. If only we knew that I, I would have, oh God. Hey, hey, there's nothing to worry about here. Would, would you like to stop for a few moments? We tried. We, tr we tried to regain control, but we were going down. Fred knew it. He grabbed my hand, tried to calm me, and then there, there was this lightning, blinding lightning, and, and a flash, and it's, it's fuzzy, but the ocean was gone, and there were suddenly buildings and lands I've never seen before. They didn't seem real. And then, then we crashed, and I woke up here. Alone. And where exactly is here? I don't know. But it ain't home. I'll tell you that. Where is home? Amelia? Where is home? Cut the horse shit, okay, pal? I have already told you guys a dozen times. How about you give me some answers, huh? Huh? Tell me, son of a bitch! Let's go, grab her! Get... Ow, ow, hey! Go! Restrain her! Stop! Let's go! Stop it! You're... Get her down! Ow! You're hurting me! Stop it! Stop! Poor disquieted spirit. I wonder how she fits into all of this. It'd pay to remember that face. This spot looks more hospitable than the world. Looks like we're in some kind of festival. 
What is that smell? Skunk? Sheesh, take a look at that crowd. I've seen some unhappy crowds in my time, but this might just take the cake. You would have to be a real hero on those girls to quiet them. Harriet, did you find Jimmy? You said you'd look after him, you grand pillock. Give him a bottle of Jack, you said. It'll calm his nerves, you said. Well, what about my bloody nerves? What about our career? Ian, man, Harriet ain't Jimmy's mum, like. We don't own each other, right? That's what the man does. Don't you talk to me about the man. I was a bloody plumber. And don't fancy going back. Now, they got a goon who's keeping us from having a good butchers for Jimmy as we scarper with the advance. Think of a way to get rid of him and find our bloody singer. Harriet, oh, glad you're here. Ian's being like super heavy, you know? Like, yeah. We lost our singer, and we're meant to be on stage right now for our international debut. And that was clumsy of us, granted. But a bird in the hand's worth at least a cup of spilt milk, right? You're not helping, Janice. All the hard work, all the crummy bars working for the circuit's best, worst payers, yet we made it. Only for Jimmy to go AWOL when it really mattered. Why? That gay was nervous. You're sinking a few, but the disappearing act. Yeah, well, I tried to look for him. That fog at the exit got it in his head that if he lets us off the stage, we'll scarper with the advance. You're pretty resourceful, Harriet. Think of a way to maybe distract that goon and, and find our Jimmy. Rock and roll? Are they musicians or a tumbling act? The toads to nowhere. <laughs> Do they croak in harmony? <laughs> I'll stick with Schubert. Those bottles sure look like one hell of a safety hazard. Reminds me of that old nursery rhyme. Ten green bottles of beer on the wall, ten green bottles of beer. And if one of those bottles should happen to fall, there'll be sparks and mayhem and that will be all. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but are you thinking what I'm thinking? You ain't going nowhere. You weird ass musicians. All the same. Come on, you're supposed to be on the stage right now. Oh, let me guess. You still can't find that Penejo Jimmy. Not my problem. You better find him or you're gonna have some tough questions to answer when the boss gets up here. Me oyes! Sheesh. What a party pooper. Alright, let's sing the same tune then and find that Jimmy fella.
was a real Houdini act. If my memory serves me right, this process deconstructs and then reconstitutes matter into new things. Those things being shiny new wardrobe additions for yours truly. Bullseye. Keep going, Missy. Last call. What now? Hey, what the hell is going on? Huh. Looks like he's taking the bait. blew a fuse. Looks like we can't go that way now. The classic pulley system. Well, time to pull your weight. And Let's get some good seats. Fantastic. You'd make a wonderful elevator operator. But I'll settle for terrified time traveler. Now what do we have up here? Can we get a good... And Merry Christmas. Well, what'd you get? Two antiquity objects. You must have been a real good kid this year.
What the? Oh, I thought it was a floating outhouse. Like the ghost of a lavatory from a bygone era. Trust me, I've seen weirder. But wait, why is it locked? Nice shot! Oh shit! That is definitely not good. I think that was our Jimmy. Another message, possibly. Though we would need a special contraption to glean its gossip. Wrangle its whispers. Keep an eye out, Asher. Let's use them new antiquity fragments we found. Keep moving! Somewhat distinctive and old. Well, we've gone back a long way this time. Well, I guess cleanliness isn't a priority in these parts. I was always taught to look after things of value, especially things of the golden variety. I heard a tourist trap before, but this takes the cake. A dangerous cake.
I should have placed a bet. We have been here before. Or after, to be perfectly correct. Looks like the civilization is still thriving. You think the great city of Tikal is yours? Our king may have buckled under the weight of your blade, but the people have fled. All the fires have dwindled, plunging us into darkness. Abandoned, our fates balance on a knife edge. You tempted the gods by claiming the city. Today, on the eve of the dying of the year, but there may be hope yet. The great ritual now awaits you. Light the fires of Chak Shuite. Not in half a century has the green flame been seen. Succeed, and the people will return. Fail, and the apocalypse will shroud us in darkness for all eternity. Save the city's heart. The heart of Tikal. Journey deep into the mountain, past the sleeping frogs. If you are worthy and able to see beyond the veil that covers the eyes of lesser men, the green flame of Chak Shuite will find you. Take this. It will help you find your way. Why, thank you. I've always wanted one of these. Remember, Sia. Your victory may prove as worthless as dust if you cannot save the heart of Tikal. For then, the cries of king that teased you in your dreams will be replaced by the rush of oceans of blood as the demons you unleash, born of your ambition, carry out the dread apocalypse. Well, that certainly did something. Hopefully helpful. A secret door, just like Sherlock Holmes. Carry on, Watson. Ah, uh, yes. Rather elementary. The game is a cook. I hope you're not scared of heights, or rickety bridges that can snap at any second and drop you to your doom. <laughs> I'm not scared.
video and that device she physically jumped in time Settle down to a good book on espionage. And the author spends a page and a half describing the hero's drapes. Exactly, son. We'll push too hard against the tide, and Father Time will show us the door. Better luck. 
well after all. Better luck next time. Let's go. Not like you're achieving much with those two.
Now hold on, son. That's some kind of explosive, uh, interpreter. That could be mighty useful for our current explosive predicament back in the year 378. I suggest we return to Takao, the year 378. Our path ahead lies there.
Well, that was cutting it close. Long live the king. Now to find a way out of this cave, I suppose. Step right up. I remember this carnival game. Uh, wait. I, I, I might have jumped the gun. This is not like the last one. I'll just run a number on you. From what you look at? Fit for a king. I hope. I am 
trash you there. Night in darkness, god of flame. Fire consumes, fire destroys. Yet without it, there can be no light. And your world ends. You seek my flame to stave off the darkness that already surrounds Tikal. Why would I trust the mere mortal with my fire? Why should you decide the fates of those beyond these walls? You must rule with the fire that destroys in one hand, and the fire that sustains life in the other. You dare to assume this responsibility. Yet, you do not move like a mortal. Your footfalls echo throughout time, in which you skip with the ease of a child crossing a river on stones. I will never give up the heart of the cow to a mere mortal. Which is why I give it to you, Asha. It's real. The priest was right. That is. A green flame. You hear that? Music to my ear. A way out. The grid, hey. Come on, we got to fight fire with fire. You did it! You hold in your hands the green flame of Chakshuite. Quickly, we must complete the ritual. You must first light the fire, extend the flame you carry, and set it ablaze. Ha! It burns brightly. All is in order. Now, reach out and take the heart that you see. What now, the... cast the heart into the God. flame. May the kingdom see your first command, written in the sky with fire. A new era of unity and prosperity can begin under your name. Fire is born. Take this, good king, my most precious possession, given to me by the nameless trail. Well, we tested the waters, and we failed. Looks like we're gonna need some syrup. That was a trip. But I mean, you saved this king, and seemed to bring about a new age for these people. So, uh... I guess we played our part. Perhaps we should make a return to our treasure-stricken friends in 1525. One would hope their fortunes have enriched with our deeds here. Is that a see where this new antiquity fragment might lead us? Choice is yours.
That wallpaper really ties the whole mood perfectly. All right, keep your eyes peeled. Wasn't particularly fond of the rainstorm last time around. Shouldn't you be working, rocket boy? You should have tried harder in science class. Be careful now. Salt and sugar look the same after all. You like riddles? I sure like to exercise the old brain from time to time. So count me in if you want to take a crack at it. Hey, Helmut, I'm telling you. Don't let General Kamler find you lazing about. He's not happy with your department as it is. I'm getting a strange case of deja vu. Anyway, let's keep our pa- I don't want to give you any ammunition to procrastinate, but that's ammunition.
What happened to the decoding machine? I, I discovered it had been tampered with only this morning, Herr Kandler. Oh, and who is the traitor? You? Only you have access. Is this why you are delaying production of the rockets? Your comfort will be that time-jumping old stinker who was breathing down your pop's neck in that video. How dare you! Your new headquarters should be operational by now. The factory is fully operational. And how many rockets are you producing each day? 35, give or take. That number is to be doubled. These are the Führer's direct orders. But the war is over. This is madness. Germany's greatest leader is a madman, you see. Perhaps you would like to share this message with him personally. We know each other well, Kamala. I am an engineer. You are a general. You have your orders, I understand. But whether it be 35 or 305, the exercise is now futile. We have lost... Lies! The German race is on the verge of a momentous victory. I am not the only one with access to the machine, Herr Kamler. You too could have gotten into that room. <laughs> von Braun, the one the kind. I fear you may have been drinking your own rocket fuel the way your lips are flapping. Know this, if I thought you were sabotaging the German people, I would unload this Luger into your brain in a heartbeat. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! If you've got nothing to do, Helmet, why not make me a rocket that'll fly me away from this madness? Otherwise, shuffle along.
Yup. Looks like a basement, all right. Can't be certain, but, uh, I bet it smells like one, too. All right. Looks relatively straightforward. I suppose we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here.
Greetings. If you're privileged enough to be viewing this film, that means you're about to become privy to an undertaking that has the potential to reshape the world as we know it. I'm Professor Howard Whitman, one of the chief scientists here at Project Phoenix. Along with my colleague Professor Newman and our wonderful team, we've been developing technologies acquired by the Department of Defense. Technologies that could completely neutralize the atomic threat. Yes, you heard right. And that's only the beginning. I present the Temporal Transporter. Time. Space. The final frontiers. As the newly formed NASA looks skyward towards space, our focus has been to look forward and back into time. Time. Complex, stubborn, yet we have begun to uncover its secrets. We have discovered that by exacting pressure in the right places, we can create what we call a singularity. These events, when captured and harnessed in the right way, can allow us to bend time and space itself. Lies! Prove it, I hear you say. I don't blame you. Don't worry, you'll get your demonstration. But first, allow me to elaborate on this a little further. These vials that you see now allow us to capture the raw power of these singularities. When coupled with the transporter and the encoder, we can create a whole new singularity. Only this one. We can program, manipulate, and control. Right? Now, to the main event. Attached to the temporal transporter is an ordinary pocket watch set to the time 5.54 p.m. I will now send this pocket watch along with the device 10 seconds into the future. When the second hand strikes 12, we will initiate the transportation. That'll be in three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Observe. This pocket watch is now ten seconds behind us. No time has passed for the watch. You didn't just witness a magic trick. We're scientists, not magicians. This is relativity in action. The barrier of time has indeed been broken. What does this mean for our great nation moving forward? Wars being won before they even begin. An ability to roll back the clock on failed policy and quite literally try again. A new global season of peace and prosperity. A world with no surprises. Or at least, no surprises we can't prepare for. I thank you for the ongoing support from all your departments. Any questions, do reach out to our press secretary to arrange a private interview or presentation. God bless you, and God bless America. We just picked up a few priceless pearls, Asher. That man, Howard Whitman, worked with your grandfather. My guess, he's the brute we saw in the wheelchair who was hot on the heels of your grandpappy. As for the time contraption, I'd hazard both that menace and your grandfather are behind it. It does look akin to the gear he left us.
Rockets, eh, dear Helmut? The dream of space, hmm? sparked in a young boy's head? But become a man, and one learns that science does not have a moral dimension. <laughs> it is a knife, hmm? You give it to a surgeon or a murderer, each will ply their trade. <laughs> Oh, forgive me, Helmut. I always need a nip and some philosophizing after a visit from General Kamla. He, he, he was out for blood, hmm? enraged about someone having tempered with the Enigma device. God knows who would dare do such a thing. That telegram there on the desk, it came in today, but alas, we cannot decipher it. Just more madness for us to deal with, eh, boy? You'd think we'd be used to it by now. Oh, auf Wiedersehen, Helmut. Some rogue tampered with a decoding machine, huh? Sounds like our adversary might have had a role to play here, too. I wonder what news they figured needed eclipsing. Silverware. I wasn't wrong about this era being turbulent. <laughs> 